All right, so we've seen that we can use this new PHPP spaces component in order to pull some TFA surface information into our grasshopper definition and then host some new information on our honeybee zones or, or rooms. So let's take a closer look at exactly um, what type of detail and what type of information we can encode into our model at this point and how we can use these PHPP spaces components. So let's come in and uh, come into my grasshopper definition here and come in and take a close look. And yeah, notice on the PHPP spaces component, there's not a ton of input. So it's not like we can input things like um, room names and, and room numbers uh, here on this component. Uh, this component is assuming is sort of um, reliant on a bunch of information being encoded back in the back in the Rhino scene. So just as we have shown with our windows and with our uh, wall assemblies, roof assemblies, etc, um, we're gonna we're gonna host a bunch of information in the attribute user text of our geometry back in the Rhino scene. and then that's gonna get read into our grasshopper definition automatically by our new PHPP spaces component here. So let's take a look at what type of tools we're going to use to add that information into our Rhino scene. So uh, let me minimize our grasshopper definition for a moment. And let's come into our Rhino scene here. And um, if you've been following along, we in the last section, we drew some geometry to match the interior floor plan. Remember, with TFA and with PHPP spaces, we are interested in the net interior floor area. We're also interested in the net interior volume. So it's important that we um, uh, draw or somehow create the interior space geometry here in order to get all of those parameters into our PHPP. So uh, how are we going to set up the individual spaces? How are we going to encode a bunch of information? Well, we'll do that through our PH tools ribbon or our PHP, PH tools toolbar. And here in the PH tools toolbar, we have a new tool called set TFA parameters. And so just like with our set uh, surface parameters or set window parameters, we have the ability here to select a piece of geometry. So for instance, if I select this surface and then come up here and say, uh, set TFA parameters. And when I click that, I get a, another input dialog box, just like the, the others that we've looked at before, which is going to allow me to set a whole host of information for this geometry, for this one piece of geometry. So for instance, I could set the room number, say it's 107, and I could set the room name, say that it's bath, and I can set the TFA factor, 100%, 60%, 50%, 0%. So if it's a normal interior floor area, the um, you know treated floor area factor would be uh, one if it's a normal habitable space. We also have the ability down here to set a bunch of uh, performance characteristics. So for instance, I can set up the fresh air ERV, HRV, flow rate information here, either the supply flow rate, extract flow rate, or transfer air flow rate, you know, in the typical PHPP parlance. Or if I'm working on a non-residential project, I have the ability to set things like the PHPP room category. So we can designate individual spaces as certain types of rooms. We could set up the lighting control um, uh, if we want to use some sort of an automatic uh, daylighting control and then motion detectors as well. Um, this really for non-residential only. We don't need to worry about any of this stuff if we're doing a simple single family home. But obviously we do lots of other projects that are more um, more complex where, where this type of stuff is really important. So. In any event, we can encode all of that through this tool here. For our purposes, we'll just go ahead and leave all this blank. And let me just leave all of this blank for a moment. Let's take a look at what happens. So I'm going to input this information and say OK. And just as with all of our other uh, tools that we've looked at, if I was to come over to my properties, come into my attribute user text, notice that I've got all, all sorts of new information which has been applied to this geometry. If I select some other geometry, notice I don't have any attribute user text. And um, so we've got things like TFA factor, room name, room number, etc. Now all of this information is able to flow through into the grasshopper scene. It gets 
applied or added to the honeybee room, and it flows through the entire definition, and we can then pull it out later on when we go to build our PHPP. And of course, I can come in and edit any of this information at any point. I can come back up here and go to my, I can select that surface, come up here and, you know, change the number to 108 or something like that. Say, okay, notice that that changes here in the attribute user text, that'll flow through and update in the PHPP. Undo that because we do want that to be 107. Oops, do that properly. Uh, 107 bath. Uh, so while we're we're here, so hopefully that makes sense. What we're going to do is go through each individual space and set all that up. While we're here, let's talk about fresh air flow rates. So we'll come back and talk about ventilation in a lot more detail in future um, future videos. Uh, but just uh, to to um, sort of preempt that. Um, one of the easiest ways to set fresh air flow rates, in my opinion, um, is by using this tool here. Of course, you can always use the typical honeybee tools to set those things, but um, especially for Passivos projects, we like to be able to dial in the fresh air flow rates um, using this sort of ternary uh, uh, configuration where we have the supply extract and transfer air, and we can sort of set them up um, individually. So in any event, for a bathroom, you know, a typical washroom with a with a with a shower. Um, uh, the typical code would say that at normal. So at so notice we can set um, we can set these flow rates at either normal boost or away mode. So at normal at you know every day normal flow rate, we should have an extract of something like twenty cfm cubic feet per minute of airflow out of a bathroom. If I to the tab, notice that it does that conversion. So by default, or or in the model, I should say, like in the physics model, everything is done in SI units. So everything gets converted over to cubic meters per hour. Um, but of course, you can enter that information, like I said, as 20 CFM, and you know that'll do that conversion for you. So 20 CFM continuous, that would be code minimum in you know most parts of um, uh, the U.S. at least for something like a washroom. Uh, if you're doing intermittent, of course, it would be higher, but for continuous ventilation, uh, 20 CFM is usually sufficient, although, of course, check your local code for uh, your own requirements, whatever whatever they might be. In any event, let's go ahead and say um, uh, 20 CFM continuous at normal speed, and we'll say OK. And notice all of that information gets embedded here, um, and that 20 CFM gets converted to cubic meters per hour and gets converted over into... Uh, we call it boost or 100% fan speed mode. When we do all of the calculations and data entry, everything is um, everything is done at 100 100% fan speed. And then, of course, using your controls, you're able to, um, you know, in in actual uh, uh, in actual um, operation, you're able to bring those fan speeds way down. But for design purposes and for um, uh, the modeling, we're going to input everything as 100% fan speed. So at 100% fan speed at boost, you'd want 44 cubic meters per hour um, from, from this bathroom. That would give you 20 CFM at 77% fan speed, something like that. But don't worry, the all that math is getting done in the sort of background there. And of course, as I said, I can go in and adjust that at any point. I could come in and change that if I like. So let's set up the other rooms here. So let's come to this guy. We'll go to this one here. And this one, we're certainly not going to have any ventilation in the closet, but let's say 108 closet. It should be a 100% TFA factor, so just say OK. Uh, this will be the kitchen. So the kitchen, we'll come in here and we'll say 104 kitchen. That'll be at 100% TFA factor. And for a kitchen, we would normally say that at boost mode, so on high speed, you know, when you when you kick the ERV or HRV into high speed, we'd want something like 36 CFM of um, extract, somewhere in that range. So let's say let's say let's go ahead and enter that, and um, that'll convert to 60 or so cubic meters per hour. Say OK, and let's do our mechanical room. Let's say mechanical room. So this is 103 mech room. Uh, for a mech room, do we want any extract here? Probably a little bit. Let's say like let's say like 10 CFM at normal fan speed. Say okay. 
we'll, we'll see. We'll see what our total flow rate is and see if we're over our target of like 0.4 to 0.5 ACH for the building. Uh, we'll see how see how far off we are. But for now, let's assume that we'll do a little extract air from the mechanical uh, closet. 100% fan speed, no ventilation. Uh, let's see the entry. This is 101 entry. 100% TFA. Do we do any ventilation in the entry? Probably wouldn't be bad. You got people's boots and stuff in there. But for now, yeah, let's do that. Let's say like, let's say like 10 CFM continuous from the uh, or excuse me on normal fan speed. Let's say 10 CFM continuous um, from the entry. That's a good idea. Whoops. And we got our living room. So we'll say living room. Whoops. Stop it. There we go. 105 living room. Uh, TFA factor 100%. And we don't do any extract from the living room, so say OK. And then the den. And we'll say den is 106. Den, 100% TFA, and I don't think we need to do any extract from the den. We would probably supply air into the den and supply air into the living room. For now, I'm just setting up extract. We can always come back and set up our supply, but um, let's just do extract for now. In small buildings like this, the extract is always the one that sort of determines the total flow rate because everybody's got you know three, four bathrooms inside of a tiny little house these days, so um, you know that that flow rate is always the one that determines. I shouldn't say always, in most cases. So, okay, so we've set up almost all of our, our elements here. The last piece that we want to set up is actually the stair. So the stair is not going to have any TFA associated with it, right? This would be a, this would not be considered habitable space. But because we're bringing in both floor area and volume, I'm going to actually enter the stair as a space. So I'm going to build out the space. So let me come back to my rectangular plane, and I'm going to model the the uh, floor. This is just the sort of flat. You know, it's all flat. For now, we're just going to do the flat element here. I'll do my planar union to join it together. And um, now let's assign some information here. So come in here. Uh, we don't have a number for it, so I'm just going to call it like 000, zero, zero say stair. And the important thing here is that the stair gets a TFA factor of zero. Right? So instead of taking 100% of the floor area of the stair into account, I'm going to take 0% of the floor area into account for purposes of calculating TFA, no ventilation, come down here and hit OK. But this will get calculated when it comes time to calculate the volume of the space. So that's important. While we do not want to calculate it for purposes of calculating total TFA, we do want to include it for purposes of our reference volume. I know that's all probably very confusing. If you have more questions on any of that, check out the PHPP or PHI rules documents or manuals. Lots of additional information about calculating TFA, calculating reference volumes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so definitely check out those resources if um, if you're confused by by any of that TFA discussion. In any event, we have come through and we have input. So if I click on any of these, we've input a whole bunch of information here around um, uh, fresh air flow rates, around object names, or room names, and room numbers. Um, if we wanted to, we could set up things like motion detectors and lighting controls if we were doing some you know, non-residential project, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But all of this now is going to flow through into our Grasshopper document. So all of this is flowing through into our Grasshopper document. And if I force this to update, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Don't connect it there. If I force this to update, at this point, let's see what we get in terms of the spaces. So we get a series of spaces, closet, Den, closet, entry, mechanical, bathroom, kitchen, living. Oh, we don't have our stair. We did not, right, I need to add that to the selection. So come into my layers. I'm going to right click here and say select objects. So now I'm selecting, I'm adding the stair in. And let me adjust my reference surfaces. This is why things like pipelines are always a good idea. Um, kind of helps avoid those those forgetful uh, moments. In any, in any event, there's our stair, so zero, zero stair. 
And um, if we were to uh, if we were to take a look at the um, volumes, so if we want to know the volumes that are being calculated, here's a sort of graphical representation of the volumes that are being calculated. Um, and so all of these objects, all of these um, uh, objects have all sorts of information associated with them about their location and their sort of host zone and um, all the stuff about TFA factors and fresh air flow rates, et cetera, et cetera. All that data is flowing through. It's being um, applied to those, uh, those different um, uh, spaces, and then that's being added to the honeybee rooms. So the honeybee rooms were, were, are, are getting a bunch of new information, a bunch of new stuff is being added to these honeybee rooms, and then that's going to flow through the rest of our, our definition. So um, that should all be working now, and um, let's um, let's finish up. What should we do? Should we finish up the second floor, or should we take a look at the PHPP? results. Let's let's go ahead and finish up the second floor and then we'll come back and talk about the PHPP results. So let's finish up our modeling here. Let me um let me turn on the second floor plan and turn off this the first floor plan. So now let's just very briefly let's just go through and model our second floor here just for um, you know, just to, so that we've got all of the, the base information there. In order to make life easy, I'm going to adjust my my construction plane and I'm going to come in here and just um, you know, use that uh, simple. Uh, whoops, use a use a three point construction plane assessment, and I'm just going to use the the boundaries of my um, geometry to reset the construction plane. So I re reset that construction plane to this upper element, and so just to you know keep life easy. Now we know that as we draw, um, it'll definitely be there. We're going to use the the um, CAD lines to help us snap anyway, but um, you know, just to just to make sure that we are. Let me do this as well. This is confusing to have this here, so let me hide this. And there we go. So uh, so let's do that, and let's do our. We'll do the closet here. We'll do the simple ones first. Do this guy, and so I need to zoom in, make sure I'm snapping to that just right. And of course, this is actually just one space, so I'm going to do my planar union there. And then lastly, let's do our landing. And um, the landing is going to take up all of this space. What about the uh, what about that open to below space? Well, we'll come back and talk about that in a later section. But this obviously would not be, this is open to below, so any open to below space does not get taken into account. We'll come back in later sections to talk about how we handle the volume implications of those open to below spaces, though. So just lastly here, let's go through and encode our information. Um, so I'm just going to select uh, the, the surface. I'll come into my pH tools, come into the set TFA parameters, and we'll encode here, we'll say 202, bath. And of course, the bathroom should have 20 CFM of uh, uh, extract at normal fan speed. So, you know, everyday fan speed. And then we'll come in, we'll say the, be the bedroom one here, we'll say 201 bedroom. Normally we would probably give it some supply, but I don't know exactly how much just yet. So we'll leave that blank for now. Give my landing, 203 landing, say okay. And then lastly, we'll do our closet and the bedroom. So 205, oops, 205, closet, and 204, bedroom. Nope, nope, stop it. Bedroom. There we go, 204, bedroom. All right, so now we've got all of these elements in here. So let me turn off this. So here, I want to I want to get these into Grasshopper now. So I'm going to select all of these surfaces. I'm going to select all my floor surfaces. I'm going to open up my Grasshopper document again. And what we want to do is we want to we want to copy this. We want to make a copy of this PHPP spaces. This PHPP spaces is only for the first floor. So for each zone, we want to have an in, we want to have one of these. So I'm going to say I'm going to come up here and say edit copy. Say edit paste. And then let me pull this up to our, our second floor zone. And in this case, I'm going um, to take all this reference geometry. I'm going to reference this in. 
as our multiple B reps. This is going to kind of freak out for a second. And what's it going to say? It's going to say, I can't figure out what to do here. It's because we've referenced a bunch of geometry into a mismatched zone. Let me, let me preview the zone here. Right? It doesn't quite know what to do with that geometry. Well, I guess, sorry. It's still looking at the uh, ground floor zone. So as soon as I hook up the honeybee room for the second floor, this will this will straighten itself out. All right. So there we go. So we're building all of our spaces. And let me just show we're building all of our spaces here for the second floor. And we're building all of our spaces for the first floor. And so we've got all of our interior spaces. Again, we'll come back and address the question of how do we deal with the how do we deal with this issue, right? If we want to accurately calculate the volume, I'm missing a big chunk in the middle here. So we'll come back and talk about that in later sections. But the very last thing we want to do is just take our honeybee rooms from the second floor and just pass that along to our merge tool here. And then that's going to flow through the rest of my definition and out to the PHPP. So I've added this new, these new elements here. I'm creating these PHPP spaces for each of my honeybee zones. And that's going to add all sorts of new in information to our honeybee zones. So when we come back in the next uh, video, we'll take a look at what this does to the PHPP, and we will take a look at how we address this issue of the, uh, the uh, volume in the center here.